So if you're not using Notion as a blog database for your Next.js application, then you're probably missing out on a lot of features. So in this video, I'm gonna go through how to use your Notion account to create like a blog database as simple as that, where you can just have a table in here, like a normal database, and you can just you know do slug, you put an image inside of that one, you can do a lot of properties, and simply use that database throughout the Notion API to render your blog in here inside of Next.js. And you can have tons and tons of features from like images in here to rendering your contents really well in here and using like embedded images, uh, different stuff in here, quoted text, like snippets, code, and many, many more. Anything that gets supported by Notion, you can easily get it rendered inside of your Next.js blog. And yes, everything lives and exists inside of a Notion database right over here. So if you're a big fan of Notion like I do and as many others do, then we can actually learn how to use Notion as a blog database for your Next.js blog. So you can call it like a database or a content management system or a CMS. All of them are actually the same thing and all of that can be done easily using Notion. So let's first understand what a, what a database is or what Notion database. So for example, in here you can go inside of Notion. If you don't have like a Notion account or something, you can create it, of course. So simply to get start with that, you can go ahead and add a new page. As Chris in here, I already added a database in here and everything. So I'm gonna just show you how you can do that real quickly. So you can add a new page in here. For example, you can name this, oh, uh, my blog database, or I don't know, just, I'm gonna name it new blog database. Okay, I'm gonna use a table in here. Why? Because, you know, tables are pretty accurate when it kind of like represents databases and data structures. Of course, any any kind of like database right now, I'm talking about relational kind of database like MySQL or PostgreSQL, all of them actually has a table structure. So here, the best way to have that is actually to go ahead and create a table. Then you can jump on the right hand side and you can just go ahead and do like new database. This one will create for you a brand new database in here. As you in here, all these table columns, everything in here, you can add as many properties, as many columns, as many rows and data as you want. And you can use that particular database. You can use it inside of your Next.js application very, very easily. So now, for example, in here, oh, you can say, oh, this property in here, let's say we want to have a blog, but of course, this is not limited to only having it as a blog. You can basically have it as however you want. You can, for example, use it uh, to your like help page. Maybe if you have like a website for, for like support or stuff, you can have it for FAQs pages or support pages. There is potentially thousands of possibilities of what you can do with that one. Just just to be able to turn your like Notion kind of like accounting here into an actual database that you can use inside of your Next.js application. So here, as I said before, you can just, for example, turn this into a title, maybe, oh, I wanted this to be like a description or something and so on and so forth. And the fun fact about this one, you can actually edit the property in here and you can edit the type of the property. For example, if you select type in here, there's plenty of types. There is like, oh, text, number, select, multi-select, a status in here for like different statuses if you want, dates, uh, URLs, firm numbers, relation, tons and tons of stuff actually you can use. So it just gives you like a full potential to be able to use this as a real database. So as you can see, I've already like created like a database in here. I call it blog database in here. I created a simple table. And what I added is pretty simple. I added like a title. I added the slug. So slug is just for, you know, like a URL identification of the particular post or blog post. I added a description in here. I added the status and a banner image in here. Just, you know, an image to showcase on, you know, the main image of the blog post. Uh, and here, optionally, you can add the image width and image height, particularly just to be able to use it with Next.js. So we're gonna see that later on. All right, awesome. Now we've got our database set up in here. You can play with it however you want, but there's actually the structure I'm gonna go with. It's pretty simple. It works really well for blogs. So I'm just gonna go ahead now, use this database and actually try to query the data and actually query it right inside from like our Next.js application. Now, to be able to actually query the data inside of from Notion, actually get your database data, you first need to create an integration. Now, what an integration is, is simply kind of like, you know, creates for you an access token or kind of like an authorization token that allows your application to send that token through the request or alongside the request in order to be able to authenticate and be able to give you that data. So what you actually need to do, go ahead and actually notion.so then forward slash my integrations. And once you are actually there, you can just go to in new integration. I've already created a new one in here. So you can just do new integration, give it a name in here. And after you submit it, 
this actually was going to look like. So I'm going to get back. I already created integration. So you're going to have like basic information for the integration. You're going to have secrets and you're going to have capabilities. Now for capabilities in here, you need to make sure you only have the read contents. You don't want to be able to modify any contents because that could be very, very dangerous. So you just untick everything in here, only leave the read contents and make sure you do have read user information without email addresses. All right, and go back to secrets. So inside of the secrets in here, you can do show and you can actually view your secret in here, copy it. Now this secret is actually like the access token that will be able to access the Notion API so we can read our database data. Now, I assume you already have a Next.js project set up as Chris in here. I already have one with Tailwind. Everything is basically set up inside of this one. Now, what you basically need to do after you're copying your you know, secret token, you need to go in and create like a .env.local or just .env, which is, you know, environment files where you will be able to put your environment variables in here. And of course, those access tokens we just created are all of them are environment variables. So I simply just create like Notion token and a Notion database ID. Now, what is this database ID? It's pretty simple. Now you go back to your actual, you know, database in here, instead of the URL right on top in here, when you're actually accessing your database, you can go to like, oh, notion.so and right after the forward slash in here, right after the domain name, you can bring the first portion, only the first portion in here, this is your database ID. So you just simply copy it, go back in here, paste it right over here, and you're actually good to go. Now, these are the two things or two important things we're gonna need to be able to access our database and read the data from it so we can display our blog posts. Also, one more thing you actually need to do inside of your database in here, inside of Notion, you need to go to the you know three dots in here for settings and you scroll all the way down and you're gonna find connections. Now for connections in here, you need to make sure you search and add your new integration as a connection. So the integration we just created right over here, or is it? So just the one that we just created, it's called like Next.js for us. So you need to go down here, find that same integration and make sure you select it. So from like, you know, all the connections in here, just search for next year or something. And because I already added in here, so I can't just find it anymore, but you just make sure you add the integration as a connection so we will be able to use the integration to read data from that particular database. All right, so let's go back to our next year's projects. This is the project we have right now. Now, to be able to actually read the data from Notion, we need some kind of like an SDK or like a client library that's gonna facilitate the connection between our Next.js application and Notion databases, which is basically just the Notion API. So this is actually the libraries we're gonna be needing. So we're basically we're gonna be using. So the first one and the most important one is actually the Notion HQ, which is the official library or the official JavaScript client library for accessing Notion API. So make sure to install that one. I'm installing the latest version, of course, and these three ones, which are like under the Notion render group in here, like the bookmark plugin, the client plugin, and the HLJS plugin. So all of those actually are for rendering. So this particular library in here is going to allow you to convert the page blocks, which is like a format used by Notion, into an actual HTML so you can render it inside of React, which is just the Next.js. Now for these libraries, actually there's a plethora of them. There's a plethora of like Notion.js libraries or render libraries, each with different features and options and capabilities. And there's actually two really good ones I really like, I really like works with before. The first one is this particular library is pretty simple. The reason I chose this one, this is like, it's a pre-release and everything, but the reason I chose this one is pretty simple to integrate and use. It works flawlessly, but there's actually some stuff like Markdown is not supported. So there's some missing features. And the next library is called React Notion X, which is a little more complicated. It has tons and tons of different features, but it's very, very robust and it really is super reliable. So you can just go in and like read through this and how to use it. I worked with it really well before and everything, but this more is kind of like, you know, it, it takes time for you to do that. But instead, this one is more of like for databases and for reading databases and stuff. So it makes it a little easier for us. And I just chose this for this particular video. But of course, you can switch between them and choose which one you like. And of course, these two ones in here are plugins. The first one, the HLJS plugin in here is just for rendering kind of like code blocks for code snippets. If you want to ever do a you know blog for developers, which most of us actually enjoying that one. And this actually bookmark plugin that allows it to you know render Notion bookmarks and play around with it. All right, so for doing an actual blog, what you need to basically do go through, you go inside of the app directory in here inside of Next.js. And if you're not using the latest version of Next.js, you're probably having like the pages directory, which is the old way of, you know, creating pages and stuff. But this is actually the new feature, the app directory, the app router. So you create a folder in here. So this is actually going to be like blog forward slash the slag, which is, you know, the slag of the current blog post we're going to try to access. And here we just do page.tsx. And this actually 
essentially the page that's going to be rendered once that URL is being accessed by the user. Okay, cool. Now inside of that page in here, we're going to grab the parameters. So the parameters, of course, we want to grab the slug in here, which is the slug ID. So we can find which basically what particular page or what particular post we're looking for by that particular slug. So what I'm doing in here, I'm creating like, you know, a utility. So if you go to utils in here, I have notion.typescript, which is a file that basically uses the notion client in here. So you just simply do, oh, new client after, you know, using the new notion client, we pass it the notion token in here from environment variables for authentication. And this is going to give us a notion client so we can interact with the actual API. Cool. Now the notion client in here, we can create like a bunch of methods or functions that allows us to access that. For example, in here, we can get all the pages by querying the database we have. And of course, the database in here just provided by database ID through process.env you know, notion database ID, which is our database ID. So we need to provide that, for example, uh, for example, in here, if we want to get the actual page contents, what you can do like notion client blocks children, and you can just grab the particular block ID in here using the page ID. And last but not least in here, we want to grab like, for example, a page by slug, which is what's going to work for us is grabbing by slugs on a blog post kind of basis, because a blog generally kind of like works using slugs. So each post is identified with a very unique slug. And that's actually for SEO purposes and a lot of stuff you can of course, like identify that post by an ID or something else. But I would rather use a slug it's a lot better, better for SEO better for you as a developer. And that's basically how blog posts are not nowadays are created. Awesome. So you just do notion client databases, and you can access that database ID. Again, you can filter in here through like, you know, property slug, and you can just give it which slug ID or particularly the slug value in here, you want to filter at. Now, the only thing that you need to make sure you put inside of that file, which is the notion script is you import server only package. And of course, make sure to install that one because it's an actual package. Once you import that one, Next is going to make sure to actually only call that particular file or any function inside of that file only inside of the server. So you can make sure you never leak your notion token nowhere like inside of the UI or nobody can see it. It only gets called inside of the server. And as simple as that. So just as simple as that, you can basically use that to actually access that. And of course, you can find this file if you like want to grab it or quickly like copy paste it down description below inside of my GitHub portfolio, or you know, instead of the, the repository inside of my GitHub, so you can find a link description below. Awesome. Now using that we can just grab the post in here. And if the post doesn't exist, we can just return not found, which is just completely empty and everything. Now we get the contents by using the gate page contents in here, then we use the notion render. Now this is actually where the notion renderer comes the notion render is just basically you give it the notion page or whatever page or database you want, you just give it that contents, for example, when you say, Oh, I want this clients, then use the render in here, you can just basically provide it with different plugins we want to use, then simply you do render, you give it the actual contents and it's going to return for you an HTML. Now we can use that HTML to basically render our blog post. The other thing I wanted to do in here is actually create a separate component that's going to allow us to render a particular blog post. Now this is actually inside components, which is just a, you know, standalone kind of component that you give it props, and it just renders for you a blog post. That's it. So here I'm just giving it the title, banner image, banner image width and height, and the contents for the actual blog post contents, which is just generally just a simple HTML string. Of course, for accessing the different properties of a post, you need to do like prop post dot properties dot title, and you can access that. Of course, the API is not super intuitive because you, you can basically do a lot of stuff in here and you need to have or to access different properties depending on the type of the property. So for example, in here for a title, you need to access the actual property name in here, then you can need to access the title, which is an array, then you need to access the plain text super complicated a little bit. For example, in here for a banner image, which is like has a type of an URL, so you can easily access it through URL, maybe for numbers, which are the width and height in here, easy to access through a number property, and so on and so forth. So it, this all kind of like related to how notion works and how it kind of like gives you the post and their API behind the scenes. So mostly in here, it's basically related to you know, the different properties you have in here, for example, a slag, you can edit property and you can find the type which is just simply text. But of course, if you select a different type in here, the way you access it from the API kind of differs. So if you really want to like customize a lot of stuff, and you want to just go to advanced stuff, there's actually two ways. I, the one I actually really like, and it's super easy, super simple, just go ahead and console log the post. 
That way you can easily find what the post has or what the you know, the underlining objects of the post has and what properties does it exist and you can easily access it through that. The second one, which is a little more professional, and a lot of us developers are actually super, super lazy to do that, which is going through and actually reading the docs of Notion or the developer docs of Notion. So you can actually do it, but I, I really don't want to do that. So you can just go and do a console log and as simple as that, you know what's the API. And of course, if I try to access the post in here, it's pretty simple as well. It's just like an article that has some tailwind classes in here. The first one is actually I'm providing the title. So an H1 for the title, I'm using Next.js image and that's I'm actually providing this, you know, like hard coded width and height. So you have to provide the correct ones, otherwise it won't work for the next Next.js image component because it's like more of like relating to an optimization technique. And last but not least in here, I'm using a div. Now this is actually very important. So you need to, for basically putting the contents because this is actually an HTML content. So you can't just put it like this where you put like contents right over here. This won't work because this string in here is actually an HTML. So when working with React, what you basically need to do is actually do dangerously set inner HTML, then you provide that HTML property in here, you provide, you know, the HTML string, which is contents for us in here. And that's magically is going to work superbly fine. All right, so let's go back and try that one. So for example, I'm going to grab my slag in here and make sure to put the slag. I'm going to get back to my project as you say, I already rendered that. But simply what you need to do is actually the URL you need. So blog then forward slash the actual slag. So you just once you submit that it's going to go through and actually fetch that for you. It's going to fetch the title, the image. And of course, all the post content in here is going to be fetched for you. And you're probably wondering how do you actually set the content in here? I was kind of like confused first when I started with notion as well, but it's very simple. So when you go to the database in here, you go to your row, you're going to find this open button, you click on it, and you're going to have this side thing in here, which is just simply a separate page. So each row in here is just like a separate page in here with different properties. That's simply what it is. And of course, you can put the content right over here. So the HTML content you're going to have or the blog post content you're basically going to render eventually is going to exist right over here. And of course, you can basically put whatever you want from like code samples in here or code snippets to kind of like uh, quotes if you want. So I can think I can do, um, okay, how can I use Notion? So I can do quotes quoted from uh, something like that maybe, or maybe I can do style text here. And I can just do uh, I want a block bold text in here with underline in. So as soon as that as soon as you kind of like introduce some changes, that change is going to be immediately saved into the database. And if you go back in here, you simply just refresh the page in here, and you're going to find the new contents being added for you So you see the new codes in here and the style text for us. If for example, you want to add like an image inside of that one, it would work perfectly. For example, go to unsplash image, and I can try something like, um, I don't know, just something like this, maybe. So I can just take the picture a little smaller. And I can go back in here, refresh and just see the magic happening behind the scenes. And hallelujah, so as simple as that, you can just do a lot of stuff. As you see in here, the blog looks super real. And I actually created that blog post in like, I don't know how long that video is, it's just like 15 minute. I mean, if you if you take off the explanation and a lot of talking I did throughout the video, probably going to end up with like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, top 20 minutes. That's insane. And that's super, super good. So Notion gives us superpowers if you want to use that superpowers through their databases and through their APIs. Pretty awesome. And last but not least for like the banner image in here, which I haven't talked about. So if you can just bring any URL, I chose to bring that image from Unsplash. So if you go to Unsplash, actually copy the URL of an image, you put it in here, you put the image, you know, banner image height and width in here. And you can simply inside of your code, you can just use that. So as Chris said before, image, you put the banner image in here, which is the SRC, which is just simply the URL you provide inside of the database. As simple as that, you end up with an image that looks pretty good. And once you like, if you change that one, it's going to immediately take effect. It's going to change for that banner image as well. Awesome. Anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and catch you all hopefully in the next ones.